Hey, it's Peter here for Lyratron, and I just want to talk real quick about USB MIDI input devices for your AirHarp Lyra. Now, we've had one that served us very well. It's actually made by CME, and uh, I've used it for years. I use it in all the demonstrations. Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. So, uh, we're going to have to get some new ones. Uh, for you guys who pledged 150 bucks, you get the whole package that comes with the USB MIDI adapter cable. So we're we're evaluating a couple of ones we haven't tried yet. The first one is the iConnectivity Mio, and the second one is the EMU X MIDI one by one tab or something. Anyway, EMU and 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 iConnectivity Mio. So uh, let's try the Mio. Uh, there's a there's a cable I like to use. This is optional, but um, this is just a regular MIDI cable, and I have a little female to female adapter on here. So basically, it turns this whole thing into a male to female. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to uh, instead of having for one thing instead of having something with with two plugs hanging off the air harp, I have I can plug this into here, and then I only have one plug hanging off the air harp. So it's just a personal preference. Uh, now with these with these adapter cables that go to your computer, you have one USB connection and you have two MIDI connections, and they're labeled in and out. Now the way I've, I've always seen it is the frame of reference is relative to the computer, and it's very important. It, so it's the computer's input. It says MIDI in, and that's what you want to connect to the air harp because it's going into the computer. So that I'm going to connect in this case to this extension cable, again optional, and I'm going to plug the USB plug into my Apple MacBook Pro, which is running GarageBand. It comes pre-installed on all modern Macintosh computers. And then I'm going to take the MIDI and I'm going to plug it into the AirHarp Lyra. Like so. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to create a new project. File. New. Yeah, just whatever the whatever the default name is, my song, I'm just going to put it on the desktop, because why not? Okay. Now it says the number of MIDI inputs has changed, which is good because that means it's registering this thing. Again, we've never used the iConnectivity Mio before, so hopefully it's a good one. And uh, it gives you a, de a default track, it's called Grand Piano. And that should be a, a, a synthesis track. So just press a button, one of the stoplight colored buttons, red, yellow, or green, doesn't matter, and then wave something in front of the sensor. And it seems like that's working. Then if you want to change the track, you can double click the grand piano, and it'll open up this thing over here. Let's say I want an organ, jazz organ. Or synth leads, they have more trippy sounding things. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of experimentation you can do there, but the idea is it's plug and play with the Apple, with the Macintosh, which is awesome. Uh, so let's now try um, a different, let's try a different platform. Let's try the Apple iPad. Now to use the Apple iPad, you need a synthesis program much like GarageBand. There's, there actually is a GarageBand for the iPad, but in this case, uh, we're not going to use GarageBand, we're going to use a program called Animoog, which is made by Moog Music, M-O-O-G. It's a pretty sweet program. But you'll notice there's no MIDI input on the iPad. So what you need, or there's no MIDI or USB input on the iPad. So what you need is you need a, you need a little adapter uh, that comes in something called the camera connection kit. The iPad camera connection kit. And it's kind of weird because it has nothing to do with a the camera. There, it actually comes with two things. The other thing you can throw away, but this thing has USB on it. And that's what you're after. So you plug that into here. And now you have USB on your iPad. And now you can take this USB plug and you can plug it into here. And there might be one more thing we have to do to configure this, but let's try it. Yeah, okay. With this program, there's one more thing you have to do. You have to press Setup, and it's all, it's not showing any devices, so let's hit Refresh. Ah, uh, Mio, it says. Okay, so hit Mio, and try again. So it's 
So, as you can tell, uh, it's almost plug and play. With the exception of having to go to setup and select your device, almost plug and play. So that's the Apple iPad. Uh, we're going to try the trial by fire here, the Windows Netbook. So if we get this to work on the Windows Netbook, you can get it to work on anything. <laughs> so over here, we have a program called Savvy Host, and Savvy Host is a VST host. I won't go into great detail as to what that is, but it's a program that allows you to run virtual software instruments. So you can download the zip file. We have prepackaged one. We have a special arrangement. Uh, uh, the author of Savvy Host has been kind enough to allow us to package it with a with an actual VST instrument pre-configured, and uh, that instrument is is Kyratune, which we have permission from the creator of Kyratune to distribute as well. So my gratitude to both of them. Uh, this will allow you to um, get going much quicker on a Windows machine, especially if you have no experience with uh, virtual software instruments. So open up your zip file, click on kyratune.exe, double click that, plug in your air harp, and there, you hear that sound? That's a good sound. It says it's found the Mio composite device. It's doing all of its mumbo jumbo that it has to do. So hopefully it's ready to use in the foreseeable future. No? Okay. Um, can we get a view over here of uh, some configuration stuff? You may have to go to Devices. Oh, now it's found the hardware. No? Okay. Devices, MIDI, input port, USB audio device. Yeah, that looks good. Output, Microsoft, Wavetable Synthesis. Okay, Devices, Wave. Um, I can't remember if it was the MME sound mapper. I think it was. That was what worked. There we go. Okay. It's hard to hear because it's, uh, you know, wimpy little netbook speakers. So Kyratune is pretty sweet. It's uh, basically like an analog synthesizer. You can adjust all the envelope properties of the waveform, but I won't go into all of that. Um, yeah, so my personal preference, Apple devices are much easier to work with. Either either uh, the Macintosh or the iPad. Uh, just way easier to work with than Windows. But if you're a Windows person, you can definitely use the AirHarp Lyra. So I'm gonna test the other cable real quick because you know we want to make we want to see which cable is a good one. Oh, I should mention this is important. Um, there are some cables floating around out there that go for like five or six dollars, and we when we saw those we were initially like sweet five or six dollars for a USB MIDI adapter cable, and we thought we'd be able to just buy a crap ton of them and and resell them to you guys. Well, it turns out those $5 Chinese cables are crap. Uh, I don't technically know what's wrong with them, but uh, we can't get them to work. So, uh, basically, I would avoid those, you know, you, you get what you pay for, you know. I would avoid the $5 cables. I would I would go for the $30 cables, and I would, you know, or, or plus of them are 40 or more. And I know it's a lot for a cable, but... Um, look at the reviews. If you're if you're looking at buying a cable, look at the reviews and and just see you know is it is it five out of five stars or is it you know one or two out of five stars? Because if it has a really poor rating, there's a good chance that the thing just flat out doesn't work. So let's see. I'm getting a blinky light, uh, but I'm not getting any sound. This is the EMU cable now. It's possible it just needs to... I'm going to unplug and replug. Okay, now it's saying the number of medium was just changed. Okay, well, that, that looks good. Okay, so the, the EMU works with the, the Mac, and um, we can just assume that it works with the other ones, or actually, real quick, real quick, I'll test it with the other ones. Um, because, you know, if, if we're going to be distributing this thing, we've got to make absolutely sure uh, that, uh, that it's viable. 
So again with the iPad, plugging it in, hitting refresh on Animoke. Now it shows up as EMU right away. That's good. And this should just work. Should just work. There we go. Okay. We have positive function on the iPad. So, here comes the uh, Windows test. Found the hardware. Doing its uh, mumbo jumbo. Of course not. Okay, it might still be installing. I'm gonna go up to devices. MIDI input no MIDI. Okay, well it's still I swear, I don't know why Windows has to take an inordinate amount of time to do this. Okay, and, and it see it's reset it to zero automatically. So we've got to go back to devices, MIDI. Okay, now it, there's an option for USB audio device. Are you get it in this? Can you read the text? Here, well, can you get closer so you can read the text? And zoom in. USB audio device under input port and Microsoft Wavetable under output port. Don't know if output port matters. But then uh, devices wave and then what works for us is MME sound mapper. And there we go. Okay, so um, it would appear that both the EMU and the I Connectivity Mio cables work, which is great news because it means we could offer either or both of them to you guys as part of the $150 uh, kits on Kickstarter. So, good news. <laughs> This is Peter for Lyratron representing the Airharp project. You can find out more at airharp.com. And the Airharp is currently available on Kickstarter for $100.